Hey, welcome back to Sober Now. I'm Jim LaPierre. Today I want to talk about the struggle with hypervigilance and how it affects those of us in recovery from substance use disorder. Hypervigilance is a survival skill. It's part of living with PTSD or very commonly chronic PTSD for those of us in recovery. Gradually, we're increasing our understanding of how common it is for folks in addiction recovery to have had traumatic experiences and very often uh, experiencing trauma and abuse in our childhoods. Hypervigilance is a heightened state of awareness. Uh, we tend to be easily overwhelmed by sensory input, and subconsciously, we learned how to scan our environment. It's a survival skill we're constantly scanning for threats. This, of course, makes relaxation very hard, if not impossible. And unfortunately, the worst part of hypervigilance is no matter how often we scan and fail to identify a threat, that typically does not result in feeling safe. The absence of threats uh, does not promote a sense of safety and well-being. So I often will ask people to be mindful and to kind of think about what they've noticed in their environment. Uh, is there a threat? Do they have the intellectual knowledge that they're safe? Because gradually we want to move survival skills into things that actually serve our quality of life, our health, and actually promote our recovery. We need to be able to relax. We need to be able to experience peace. And living with past trauma, especially if it's unresolved, especially if we continue to relate to ourselves in unhealthy ways, makes serenity something that's really just an idea. So what we need most is connection to self and progressively connection to safe people, safe places. And this is spiritual in nature. Most of recovery, most of transformation, requires uh, that we maintain a connection to ourself and having lived through trauma typically disconnects us from ourselves. We are, we tend to be highly dissociative, we tend to be disconnected from our bodies, we tend to struggle on a lot of fronts. So I'm wanting to encourage folks to be more mindful, to think about what is happening in their environments. I have a number of stories that I share with folks because one of the things that I've learned in serving survivors is typically we scan our living situation or our work environment or wherever it is that we're leaving, coming and going from, uh, we kind of have a mental snapshot of what that looks like and how we feel about leaving it has a really huge impact on how we feel about returning to it. Sometimes we feel like everything's chaotic simply because we're not organized or because things aren't as neat as we'd like them to be. I think part of the, the real trick here is that we're learning to be okay. Like, if you didn't get to do, get the dishes done today, if your desk is messy, if there's things that don't feel in order, how we feel internally and externally are usually connected. If we're struggling to feel like things are okay, sometimes we want an inordinate amount of organization in our environment. It's very, it's much easier uh, to have control over our immediate surroundings than it is sometimes to feel like we have control over ourselves, our emotions, uh, particularly when we're dealing with intrusive thoughts or memory. I most often hear from folks that their objection, of course, to making this shift in perspective and this change in behavior is that they have trust issues. And I understand that. Uh, of course I do. What I say to the folks that I serve is the only person I really need you to trust is yourself. And if you have some accountability in your life and if you're practicing rigorous honesty, then that's a pragmatic thing. It's not an emotional thing. It's not something that has to take forever to achieve. If you are listening to your intuition, then you have a sense of who to connect with and what situations are safe and beneficial to you. Don't overthink it. Listen to your gut. Follow what it dictates. This is a real recipe for moving from survival into living. This takes patience and tolerance, primarily with yourself. I'm not asking you to put your heart in somebody's hands. I'm saying start small, have a cup of coffee with a friend, Make some new contacts, work with a sponsor, 
whatever it is that helps you to stay clean and sober, whatever it is that helps you to feel safe in your own skin, what we're looking for is a progressive expansion where we can feel safe within ourselves, in our minds and bodies, where, to the point where we can feel safe in our home environment. And then progressively, as we increase connection to safe people and safe places, everything becomes more manageable, we have more support to draw from, and everything just works. Surviving sucks. It's exhausting, it's hard, and you deserve to be living a life second to none. So, I hope you'll reach out and get some more connection in your life. I hope you'll put a like on this video. Check out uh, Sober Now's YouTube channel. Uh, we have over 100 videos there on different topics relating to recovery. Would love to expand this conversation to include more friends and family. And please connect with me, Jim at Sober Now. Shoot me a quick email. Let me know what questions you have or what topics you'd like to see covered in the future. Thanks, and take excellent care of you.